Hello, Gen Right Nation. Thanks everybody for joining us. As you can see, I'm wearing a festive shirt that our friend Tom Nagley got for me, custom made with Aftershock and Terramoto on it. Pretty darn cool, I would say so. Um, of course, you know, we're here to talk your favorite subject and mine, Jeeps and Jeep, how to build them, how to drive them, everything related to Jeeps. So, um, as always, you can type in a comment and ask a question, either about what we're talking about or off topic. Um, this is something that Tech Talk is something that happens every Wednesday at 5 Pacific Standard Time on both Facebook and YouTube. So thank you again for joining us. Appreciate that. Make sure that you like and subscribe and share. Um, the more people that get exposure to this, I'm sure, would enjoy it. Um, today, we are going to talk about what it takes to put a cage in your Jeep. Um, we are also going to talk a little bit about Trail Hero. We've got a, a quick little video for you. And um, we're going to talk about the need for a cage. Um, while we were out of Trail Hero, there were four life flights a day from people rolling over their Jeeps. So um, you don't want to wait until you thought you needed a cage or maybe you think you're safe and you don't need a cage. Well, you need to think again. The statistics stay otherwise and uh, put one in your Jeep before you need it. We are going to show you we're eight hours in on this thing and it's almost done. So um, one of those things where I want to show everybody at home that you have the capability to at least tack it together, if not weld it all the way. If you tack it, you could take it to somebody who can weld it, um, but you can do a lot of the work yourself, okay? So um, we're going to go over the basic tools that were required and uh, then we're going to show you this is um, what we call a base cage kit. So everything's in here from the base cage, and then we're gonna go over all the options and why you need them. So, um, Jen, who have we got on today? Uh, let's see, we got Robert Kiros from Costa Rica saying hi, and DH Offroad from Germany. Nice. Um, Charlie Goodnight from Johnstown, Colorado says hi. Cool. Keith Crum. Two Feather Channel, R-E-E-X-S. We know that guy. I know, -E. Laura Coda, she's watching. Hey, Hi, Laura. Bo Fisher, what's up from Winter Park, Florida? Oh, Sydney is watching. Sydney Patterson. Hi, nice. Sydney. Nice, nice. Um, Mark Lawrence, nice shirt. Planning on Jeep Beach 2024? I'm sure. I'm, we haven't, that's, that's like light years away for us, but sure. Tom and Lisa Nagley are watching. Nice. Tom sent that shirt. Uh, awesome. Yes, he did. Thanks, a lot, Tom. A lot of compliments on your yes. shirt. Um, Steve and Tammy Bird are watching, and Steve said he has the same shirt with his Jeep on it. Ah, <laughs> nice. Alex Israel's watching and asks, can I retain the factory sound bar with the full cage 2013 JKU? You can. It's going to require a little bit of trimming with a drum sander, but totally possible to retain that. And you can see pictures on our website uh, in a JK with the factory sound bar installed. So you just got to scroll through the pictures on the roll cage. They're, they're in there. Mark Lawrence says, hi, Gen Right Nation. Travis nice. Janice from Northern California checking in. Nice. Josh Nesser says, it's Uncle Tony. That must be our friend, Callie. Hey. Hi, Callie. Um, Deborah Carnell, love that shirt. <laughs> David Moore, hello from Oregon. It's good to uh, see Deborah last from weekend. Texas, Keith Lyon from North Carolina. Nice. And Ernie Fields from Texas. Joey right. Bickers, a whole bunch of other. Thanks people. everybody. That's that's awesome. We really appreciate Let's you. Let's show the details on your shirt. On my shirt, lots yeah. Of compliments. So Terramoto, aftershock. I know the fans the Gen a little bit. Yeah, that's sick. Nice, huh? Yeah. Okay, so. Um, Let's see, let's, let's show the video real quick and then we'll jump into the cage. Sound good? Because the video, I think will also give people a feel for the whole cage thing, right? Like why it's necessary. Okay, so, here we go. Um, sit tight and you're gonna wanna watch this whole show for sure. Hey guys, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Genride Off-Road for this amazing uh, roll cage that we've recently added to my Jeep. It is engineered and designed beautifully and it is so incredibly strong and stable. It's given us so much confidence off-road and the safety it provides for our family is priceless. 
I was even willing to try You Gotta Be Nuts this last time on the Maze Trail here at Trail Hero. And I found myself trying things that I hadn't tried in the past yeah. because I knew I had this uh, great protection in place now. So I will tell you that if you guys have never really investigated the cage before, you really need to look into it. That stock JL cage is not gonna protect you. Paper I was, thin. Yeah, right? I was able to pick it up with my bare hands and bend it in the middle where the B, B pillar connects. It is that flimsy. There's a gap in between where the A pillar and the C pillar meet at the B pillar. It's crazy. Yeah, it's really, it's really not. If I didn't know that all this time, and I wanted to share that with you guys, because I'm not sure most of you guys know that either. But I will say that this Genrite off-road cage is just, That's oh crazy. my gosh, it's like crazy strong and it's crazy thick, and there's no way that anything- it Changes is, the way your vehicle rides. Yeah, it feels more solid yeah. and uh, rigid. You know, it's like, I don't know, there's just a solidness to it. Yeah. That, uh, it just feels great and it looks great too, but uh, yeah, and it gives me all that confidence off-road, which is priceless. So thank you guys so much. Uh, really appreciate it and just loving this game. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. I know we sure had a good time out there. Um, next week's show, we'll actually do a full recap on Trail Hero for everybody, but uh, that gave you a little bit of a teaser. And as you heard Aqua Jeep Girl on there talking about her cage and how shocked she was when she took off all the factory plastic and what was actually underneath um, was a little bit scary. So anyways, um, let's cut to you doing it yourself or, or you and some friends because it's really more than a one person job. Um, let's talk about the tools needed. So we're gonna start with some ratchet straps and um, we're putting together a video for you guys. We've, we've actually videotaped this entire process and um, ratchet straps are really gonna be your friend because as you know, this is a puzzled 
tube roll cage. So as you put all the pieces together, they kind of lock in. Well, the straps allow you to hold that together front and back and side to side. So straps are pretty important. You're, you're going to need a drill. You're going to need a grinder with a cutoff wheel and a grinding wheel. Um, you're going to need a magnetic level tape measure. You're going to need, uh, we used a half inch, seven sixteenths, um, nine sixteenths sockets, um, five thirty seconds Allen and a couple different sizes of Torx, uh, uh, three eighths ratchet safety glasses, um, a few different size drills here, including, um, an 82 degree, um, chamfer bit. We used a file to deburr all the edges on all the pieces. And of course your friend, the hammer to uh, get things into place when they don't want to cooperate. Um, as always, the uh, cage kits come with instructions. Now, everything I'm talking about today applies to CJ, YJ, TJ, LJ, even JK and JL to some degree. Um, obviously, the older Jeeps, the cages are a lot more simple and um, therefore uh, less expensive and easier to put in. And by the way, right now, um, on the, I know for sure the CJ and the YJ cages are several hundred dollars off, I think 400 bucks off. So, um, also a good time to, if you're, if you watch this and get inspired to do it. Um, the, the paid, this is like uh, 20 pages of instructions and, uh, there's lots of pictures and stuff. So you can follow along and, um, really get your cage together. The, uh, Shane so, says that the shirt might be nicer than the cage, but it's yeah. debatable. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, let's spin around and talk about the cage for a few minutes here. So I need you to move way in. I'm going to stand on this side here and uh, come, come right in. And we're going to talk about how this is the base cage. Okay, so these are all the standard tubes in a Genrite cage. And you can see there's a lot of them. We gave you a tube count last week and i think it was like 29 tubes there's a, there's a lot of tubes in this thing um, you get all the factory seat belt bungs and attachment points um, you get all brand new base plates you get all grade 8 hardware to go with it um, you can see the the spreader bars these are everything on this cage now this again is a cj yj cage or they're almost identical um, everything on this is inch and three quarter 121 120 wall DOM tubing drawn over mandrel. So seamless tubing. You can see the gussets, you can see the handles, um, windshield mounts. I mean, it, this, is, this is really nice. Now, one of the biggest features, can you zoom in right here? Where my hand is, right here? Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest features on the CJ and the YJ, even, even the TJ to some degree, and I know we had a box of the TJ stanchions, um, Devin's going to grab that for me. One of the nice things is, is that because there's no tube here, um, what happens is, is you get the maximum amount of foot room. So because of the way the seats are mounted in this small opening, door opening, you know, getting your feet in here is pretty important. And uh, even, even our engineer Arnold and I were talking about this today. You know, he's a tall guy. He's got a big foot. You know, getting in and out of here is um, important. So hand me the stanchion from the other side. I want to show everybody how this works. So the, the stanchion, although you can't see much, is a very thick formed piece of 3 16 uh, cold roll steel. This is, this is really beefy. It's gusseted and it's a two piece design. So you can get the cage out to have it powder coated. So this guy here locks in with the door hinge. It locks in with the rocker bolt. It's got uh, four bolts to go down through the floor. You can even tie this into the frame with an additional kit. Um, so there's, there's lots of cool things about this stanchion. So we'll put that back on the other side. Maybe you can even show them how that tucks in. Jennings, can you focus on where Devin is and, and watch how this tucks in? No windshield V? Because it's, it's not yet. That's an option. Right now we're talking about the base cage. Okay. So there you go. You can see how that fits right in there, tucks all in, and is very strong. Now, Do you have a solid center tube, or are you slug welding it together? On, on which one? I don't know. That was a question. Uh, they might be talking about this up here. The, so the, this, this tube and this tube are connected 
by another thick tube that slides inside and then that is welded together. So this is very strong. By the time you look at this entire junction with these extra yeah. gusset tubes, this is super strong. That's yeah. the B pillar. Yeah, A pillar, if you're not familiar with the terminology, A pillar, B pillar, C pillar. In the JK and JL, there's a D pillar. So there's an additional one. Okay, this is called the dash bar. We, we mount this down as low as we can. And the, this is even a little bit smaller diameter. This is inch and five eighths. So it's a little smaller in diameter, so it's easy to see. Um, let's, uh, let's actually fold this back up. And we'll, we'll show that in just a second. So you can see the windshield folds right up and it's got these little attachment points up top. But um, that gives you a good idea of what we're looking at right there. So um, pretty, pretty darn nice. So we can fold that back down. Okay, so um, the, I was going to show you guys a stanchion off of a TJ. It also tucks way in tight. Um, it's a little bit different design, right? The dash is different, but it also is very tight to the side, so minimal foot room loss. All right, I'll hand that what back out. What about YJ's stretch cage? Sure, okay, so um, if you're going to do um, any of our rear stretches. So if you're going to do TJ to LJ or YJ to LJ, we actually, if you already have one of our cages, you can cut it off right here and we sell all new tubes. I think they're about 500 bucks for all the tubes in the back. Um, and you can do the new longer tube kit for just the back to accommodate for our, our stretch on that. Um, DJ says, I'm ready to buy a JKU cage. Can we, is there, are there any discount codes available? So um, the bunch of our cages are on special right now. Um, but if you call in, um, the guys are already gone for today, but call in tomorrow, tell me saw Tech Talk and Tony said he'd, they'd make you a, a deal and uh, they'll, they'll cut you some kind of a deal. All right. All right. Okay. So now let's start talking about the options. Unless, unless you have any questions so far about the standard cage kit. Um, the same person asked, he said, I was going to order the JKU dash, but I'd like to retain the AC. It's hot in Texas. Has anyone run AC with the Genrite cage dash or should I stick with the OE dash? Well, okay. It, what you're asking is incredibly complex. You, you just went from this to this. Okay. So me personally, get over the stock stuff. It's just junk anyways. It's full of wiring issues and you're, you're going to have nothing but problems if you bounce that thing around. Install Vintage Air like I did. If you go to the gallery on our website, click on Terramoto, there's a list of every single part, including the Vintage Air, and I mean every single part, right down to the headers, okay? Every single part is listed on there. So get familiar with our website. If you're, just go to our website. Even if you just type in Terramoto in the search box, it will pull you to the gallery. Okay, a super smart website. If you're not familiar with it, shame on you. Get over there and check it out. All right, let's start talking options. Okay, so let's start with the Dash V bar, Devin. All right, so the Dash V bar goes in, I think like so. Right, oh, other way? Are we going the V in the middle mm -hmm. on this one? So. About like so. Okay. So the dash V bar, if you roll over, it helps transfer the load from these tubes down into some additional structure, then down into the A pillars. Okay. I think this kit is 39 or 49 bucks for the two bars. Um, total deal. Um, I hi By the way, I personally highly recommend all these options. If, if you don't put these options on, it's the equivalent so first off, you go from like an open face motorcycle helmet to a full face motorcycle helmet. It was a big difference. Okay. So now let's look at the harness bar. Will the cage work with a soft top? <laughs> okay. All of our cages, I don't care what kind of Jeep you have, will work with the factory hard top and factory soft top. Yes. All of them. All of them. Every single one. Ginger Raimundo is watching. Nice. Okay, see this right here? Ginger. Can you focus on this? No, I can focus on Ginger. Right yes. here. Yes, I see. Okay, the cage, all over this cage, there's little keys like this, and there's a matching key 
So female and male piece, you just put this on here and lock that into place and it's ready to weld. That's cool. Okay. So this, this <laughs> entire cage is built like this guys. It, I, I couldn't make it any easier. Okay. So now Devin's got his side. There's a tube that also keys into this. And is it on the front side like that? Yep. Right there. Tom also recommends all the options on the cage. Okay. So will that stay? Okay. All your customers recommend there we go. all the options. So this, this would be the basics, right? So this is now you put your seat in, you put your harnesses onto this tube. And uh, I'm actually going to have Devin start tacking this stuff in while we're talking, okay? Because I want to show you the X bar. So Devin, let's go to town on this baby. On Aftershock behind the B pillar, there's a CNC Genrite logo plate added to the cage. Is this an option that can be added to the JK cage? Um, it will be down the road. Now, I can tell you this. Some people have bought this off of the, the TJ, this, this kit, and adapted it to their um, JK. So, yeah, are we grounded? Yeah, inside, I see it, yep. Oh boy. I was gonna say that welder's really quiet. The, the fan wasn't on. It gets loud when it gets hot. Is it easier to coat the metal when installed or do you need to take it out after tacking it together to coat or paint it? Yes, you. you it, it really should be removed after it's tacked because, um, can you come around this way? So if you look, as soon as he's done tacking right there. If you look really careful right here, can you see how this part of the tube isn't welded yet? Here, maybe need more light. Right there, okay? So in order to get to that, yeah. um, the cage has to come out, okay? So there are several spots like that all over the cage, like down here on the bottom of this tube. Um, that once the cage is out, then the, you'll finish weld a few spots. There's another one right here that's sandwiched between the dash. And there's some down here on the bottom of the B-pillar plates. So you pop the cage out, you finish those, and then you can rattle can it if you want or powder coat it or whatever you want to do. Some people even clear coat it. They think it looks really cool how you can see all the heat signatures all the way around each of the welds. So I happen to think that's totally cool too. But if you're going to do that, what you want to do is see how we've cleaned this tube right here. It's a little more silver. What you'd want to do is buff all the tubes and then you'll really see how you can really see the heat signature down here. How it got real dark. Yeah. Then you could clear cut it and that would just look sweet. So, all right. Otherwise it's just kind of the, the tubes get um, soaked in oil as they're manufactured. So um, when you get them, they're going to be really oily. You got to wipe them all down. That's the first thing. And then you'll deburr all the edges with the file. Just make sure everything's clean and ready to go. So um, pretty darn cool. And remember, even though you're putting in the harness bar, you can still run the stock seat belts for running around town. Um, some cities and uh, some states even require the factory seat belts when you're on the road. Um, for whatever reason, they don't think this, the five points are as safe, even though they're used for racing. So um, anyways, that's, uh, that's all good stuff. But I, I just want to point that out because it's, it's not always obvious um, what we're doing on these cages. So, all right, let's do the X-Bar. So Devin's going to grab the next tubes and we're going to put those in. These are the bottom. Okay. Something in there. Am I too far? That's pretty damn close. Right about. Oh, you marked the center? Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, that fits great. Okay. Cool. You want to tack that in? Yeah, you want me to just do them one at a time? Sure. Oh, I got to hold it. Sorry. <laughs> That's a Tony thing. Your mom's watching. Hi, nice. mom. Nice. Hey, Nana. I'll first. 
Tom says TJ to LJ stretch on a YJ. There's a couple of people doing it on their Jeeps on Facebook right now. Yeah, we we um, we have the right stuff. What, what about a budget YJ engine swap? YJ engine swap? What what about the YJ? Engine That's swap? a question. Like, is that a possibility or um, anything you might do ever? What me? Yeah. Well, remember everybody. Um, this this vehicle isn't necessarily about building what I want. It's about building um, what I think is good for everybody who's watching on a budget. Okay, because when I'm done with this next series of upgrades, then the Jeep will be at twenty thousand. So the the first level was ten grand. Now it's going to be at twenty grand because we're doing the cage. We're doing the um, corner guards, fenders. We're doing all that stuff. So. Uh, and a belly up, so that's going to put us at 20. Would you recommend TIG or MIG welding? MIG is fine. So what happens is a lot of people get faked into thinking you need a TIG welded. Well, everything you heard about TIG is for welding very thin wall tubing like on a, a street race car or dragster. When you've got thick wall tubing like this, just MIG it. Uh, remember, I've raced King of the Hammers for 12 years. And every single race car I ever raced was MIG welded just like this. So, for the JK cage, why isn't there an X bar behind the rear seats? Definitely going with it on the front harness bar, but just curious. Uh, Devin, I think this is your side. <laughs> and you can see how this part of the X bar bends backwards to allow the seat. To um, recline, you need me to hang on to that. Or uh, the it? question is, what? Oh, okay. We had it right the first time. What's yeah. a good budget choice engine for a YJ? I have a YJ with a 2.5. Oh, it needs more it. power. Um. Well, the most people would just do a 5.3 liter uh, Chevrolet engine. They're readily available. Um, I know when I was back um, in Kentucky and Tennessee, you can pick them up for a grand. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very affordable. They, they might be high miles, but you can run them for a while and throw it away and throw another one in for a grand. And that's cheaper than you can buy a rebuild kit for. And can you talk more about the YJ to LJ options? So the YJ to LJ is exactly like our TJ to LJ, except... The shape of the tub right here, can you see this right where I'm talking about? The shape of the tub right here is slightly different. Hang on, I'm going to grab the hammer for him. They take some persuasion. <laughs> Usually we do this before we've assembled the Yes, plate. yes. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah, and just set it down. Um, okay, so we provide you a 15-inch long piece right here. When you cut the tub, you slide this back and you put in the, the piece, then you get an all new aluminum interior. And, and I want everybody to remember, we built Jamie's YJ, which is LJ length, three years ago. So we did all this already a long time ago. Um, back when we did it, nobody was talking about stretching a YJ into an LJ, but the TJ to LJ was you know, quite talked about and popular. So um, now we're offering the, the YJ to LJ stuff. So if you're interested, just call and uh, my guys can, can get you going on that. So you can see how um, he's tacking this together and it actually goes together quite nicely. And again, we cleaned all these tubes um, earlier. Now, what's super important for everybody to understand is if you dump this thing over on its side, this X bar is what's really going to keep this whole thing from just folding over. If you've ever seen a Jeep with a stock cage or, or some other brand of cage roll over without an X bar like this, they just crunch over and uh, hopefully you're not sitting on the side that the cage just moved over on. So this adds a ton of strength. Now, from the back, can you back up a little bit? Yeah. From the back, we've got these bars here which do add some of that strength if you don't have the X bar. Um, and just by adding the harness bar does add quite a bit of strength, but the X bar is really what does it. And then add the V bar in, and now you've really strengthened this whole thing up. Now we're gonna do 
One more option I want to show you back here. Did you hear that question about the JK cage? Why isn't there an X bar behind the rear seats? Uh, there is. Um, it, it's not a full X, but it has to do. Look, when um, I wasn't really planning on having a whole uh, cage seminar on how to build a cage, but when when tubes run across like this, these are what we call nodes. And if you look on the JK cage, the there's a node that comes down, and then that transfers into the floor. And um, again, you'd have to very carefully look at our stuff is so well designed guys i you know i don't need to make any excuses for why something is or isn't it's it's the way it needs to be so okay uh notches on top right there we go okay so this is the c pillar option and uh this is really cool because we're gonna let that side in first we got a question sure um, are there any tricks to keep everything square or does everything key together perfectly? Okay, that's uh, right here. So it does key together perfectly, but um, you need the magnetic uh, angle finder. So what we do is we put this on here and then we check it on both sides to make sure that the cage is square. Now, what I can tell you is the, the way that I just showed you how this stuff keys together, when you take the ratchet straps and you crank it this way and you crank it this way, everything locks into place. You know, this is all precision laser cut and it just fits together beautifully. So, um, like part of the reason um, Devin is forcing a couple of these bars in right now is because we've already welded a lot of this stuff to show you guys the base cage and then I'm trying to show you step by step what the options are so that everybody understands what the benefits are okay so let's talk about the c pillar c pillar can you see me over here can you see me over here i'm sorry i'm okay. looking at a question all right so when you complete this cage here now if you take a hit on the corner that you've got a lot more reinforcement, right? Not only do you have this pull, but now you're pushing against the other side. I mean, this, is, this has got a lot more strength to it. Um, so that's what we're talking about, how we tie all this together. Now, we do make a C pillar to frame tie-in kit. We make an A pillar to frame tie-in kit. And for some of the YJs, we have a B pillar to tie-in kit as well. So what do you need? What's that? Oh, this. Okay. So this is an important thing too. This is called a uh, tube coupler. Okay. And this little guy locks together like this. And you can see how once it's together, you can't even tell that it's actually two pieces. So what we do is um, once we tack this on, we cut this tube and we insert this little guy right here. Okay. So that basically when you want to take out the center tube, because you have something big to move, um, all you have left is this little piece on this on each side and then the, the main part of the tube comes that's out That's cool. It's really cool. So that's what I'm gonna do on my cage here um, These are these are not cheap, but they're super strong and uh, We use them on race cars and stuff. They're they're very very strong and uh, that's a great way to go because a lot of times, you know, you need to be able to pull this out if you have a big cooler or just moving something and uh, or you just need all the cargo space right are so. all the options on the cage street legal in california so the only one that i guess if you found the right cop or, or you pissed off the wrong cop would be the dash v bar tactically um you're not even supposed to have anything hang off your rear view mirror okay let alone you know oh, something like now the reality is is most police officers are former military and they love jeeps so you have to really be doing something acidine to get hassled in your jeep okay so don't be that guy or gal and uh you know you're gonna be fine everybody appreciates the structure and the safety here yeah. um so and i know the next question that i'm surprised somebody hasn't asked is what about getting people into the back seat well i mean everybody always rode with me they just climbed in you know, it's like a jungle gym. So, um, 
you know, that, that, or depends on how big or little your kids are. Yeah, we need to show the side panels too. So we make a little GR side panel that comes with this. I guess you could climb in the back, right? You could climb in the back, like over the back seat, yeah. yep. Um, and a PRP bucket will fit in here. You can use the factory seat that tumbles forward. Um, what else? Um, Alberto asks, when converting TJ to LJ, do you just splice the wiring for your tail light? What do you do about the fuel lines? Yeah, everything's got to get extended, guys. Like, there's no mystery there. And it's not a big deal. You just extend it. You know, if you have to put a little piece of stainless tubing and then another piece of rubber um, in and clamp it all down, they, they make special EFI hose clamps and you can even double them up. Uh, but yeah, wiring, tubing, you know, vent lines, fuel lines all have to be um, extended. So, okay. For the side panels, we have a little tab. I want to come around. And uh, what we normally do is we bolt these tabs onto the side plate and then they will get tack welded and eventually fully welded into place on the tube. And then you'll get your little GR side plate to go. And this is what somebody asked about earlier. Can I do this on my JK cage? You can actually buy this kit and adapt it to your JK cage. So. Speaking of JK, Jerome asked, what is the function of the vertical down bars in the JK cargo area? I've seen some people run them and some don't. Okay. So that is exactly what I was talking about earlier. There, there's a tube that runs like this, right? Because somebody said, why isn't there an X bar? Well, there's a, a version of an X bar, right? It's not as extreme. It comes down here and then it comes straight down and ties into the floor. Um, unless you are running our JK Elite suspension, you should have that down bar in there because that is the additional structure that ties into the floor, um, which is all double wall back there because that's where the seat belts go. So um, you definitely should have that if you don't, yeah. Josh asks, can we get a custom side plate? Uh, you can do whatever you want, but this is all I make, of course, <laughs> okay? Um, Kaysen asks, with the crossbar in the back, is it tall enough for a refrigerator and a slide? So um, depends on what you get. Um, the, and that's part of the reason we make it removable um, because, you know, it's probably not. Like, I know my ARB is a little bit taller than that. So, um, but if you've got a Yeti or something else, I, you know, they'll slide underneath there. So just kind of depends. Yeah, let's talk about the cargo racks right now. So let's show the big one first. So the other thing that you want to figure out if you want one of these while you're building your cage is because you can build the mounts right into the cage, okay? So this comes with a couple different mounts. There's a standard mount, is it right there? We can set it down. There's a standard mount, and this, the reason we're bringing this up is because this is your other, your other uh, uh, refrigerator option. Okay, so this is the standard mount. Can you see this pretty good? So this mounts to the top of the inner fender wall, and then um, you screw this on. See the mounting holes right here and here? You screw this on and you get a, you get a couple inches of uh, you know, different levels you can put it on. But um, one of these goes on each side. So this is how you would mount it if you don't have our cage, okay? If you have our cage, we make a slick mount that actually screws into the side of the tube and um, that goes right here and then you have adjustability based on that. I don't think we got one of those over here. No. That's, that's the box we opened up that we thought we had. Um, Jen Smith asks, once the lower part of the front station is installed, will it come out with the rest of the cage for final welding and powder coating? It will. So um, the way it works right now is there's, there's two bolts right here that sandwich these two pieces together, right? This is tied in through two of the hinge bolts one of my rocker bolts and four bolts into the floor that's, that's sandwiched from the bottom. So this is a, a really good structure. What you do is you take the nuts off the bottom of this and then this upper part can come out and then you remove this lower part and have it all powder coated or painted at the same time. And Jeep Talk Show asks, even though the YJ is on a frame, does the cage stiffen it up? 
It does. In fact, um, you'd be surprised when, when even the stock cage was out of this, it was really flimsy. And now this thing has gotten super solid. So um, yeah, it, it definitely makes a huge difference. Um, so now let's talk about the other option. The other option is a smaller cargo rack that can go way to the back here. And if you put this in, a lot of the time you can run it with the rear seat in there. Um, this little guy is really cool because you see these mounts that we've got on here? Mm -hmm. There's little cleats that you can move all over the place inside this to tie your cargo gear down. So, um, what, the thickness? Thicker yeah, this is thicker as well. So, the nice part about this rack is this rack can also be used in the back in our cargo, or sorry, our tire carrier as another cargo rack. So, this is made to hold um, a five gallon propane tank, firewood, a uh, 2000 watt Honda generator. The, I've, I've had all kinds of gear inside here to make sure it fits everything. So, this is really a a nice size rack. So when, when everybody was talking about like a fridge under, that larger rack holds a 37 quart ARB this way. So you can have it up top if you want. Jerome, so. we ask, can, can you compare the full cargo rack to the smaller one? Are you going to add the T-slots in the full size rack in the next revision? Yeah, probably. Um, we, we just haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. Do, do we need to put it back in? Is that what they were asking? Or do we need to show them side by side? Like it's, I, I think it's, is it twice? Oh, I missed a this question size. from Bo. No, it's like, a here you can see that it's like a little over half. It's like 60% of the size, the small one versus the large one. Does your frame tie-in kit work with the body lift and belly up kit for a YJ and TJ cage? It does. So let's take a look. Come on over here to the side. I don't know if you can get down low enough, but the way this works is mm. this comes over. So right now this, this piece comes longer than you need it, but it's, it's actually made for the body lift. Okay. So for me to run it without the body lift, I'd have to shorten this up. Okay. But this, this plate, um, can go, it, it actually goes like this. It goes up underneath here to the, that bottom of the stanchion. And then there's this plate that welds to the side of the frame that then has the, the urethane bushing in it so it keeps everything from squeaking because your body is rubber mounted. So this little guy goes on the side of the frame and uh, that ties you in. And that's a, a thick wall tube as well. So then you're completely tied in. And remember the A-pillar is what takes the hit. With the motor in front, when you roll over, that's really what's, what's taking the big hit. Jeep Pope says, Jerry and I custom fit a Genrite JKU roll cage with all the add-ons to fit a JK because Jerry wanted Vengeance to have that fastback look on a two-door Jeep. There is no back seat in Vengeance. Can you explain why Genrite will not manufacture a roll cage like this? Um, it's, it's mostly, um, the, the, first off, it's liability, right? Even though somebody puts a, a fastback style cage in, um, we always tell them you're not supposed to run that back seat, but we see people with back seats back there, right? It it really should not have it doesn't passengers. This your head. this is what gives you the full coverage for a passenger. And by the way, um, one of our own guys that works for us this last weekend at a Trail Hero said the guy in front of him had a fastback cage. He went through one of the notches and rolled and got stuck in there. On his, when he went through, it scraped this part of the cage, which kept him from rolling and he was able to climb out of there. So just, you gotta be careful what you wish for. All of our cages, and I mean all of them, all the way from CJ up to the newest Jeep, are smooth all the way along the side. And the reason is, is I want you, if you get in a situation, I want you to be able to drive your Jeep past a tree, past a rock, past whatever the obstacle is, um, all the way down without getting hung up. And that's, if you really start looking at other cages, there's very few that are smooth like that. The other thing I did was I made the front smooth like this so that if you're not running a windshield, you just take this bracket off and you've got a nice buggy looking cage on the front that's clean and it doesn't have grandma's coffee table feet hanging out. You know, it's, it's just clean like a buggy. 
Okay. Uh, Kane Grove says 95 YJ. What gear ratio would you recommend for a 2.5 uh, with 35s? So you're going to be 456 or maybe even want to go to 488, but definitely 456. Okay. okay. All right. Next option. Roof. This is one of my favorite ones. Okay. This, this specification on the roof is um, same as we run in the race car. And um, grade eight bolts. This is what, oh, all the way to the back. Oh, this is the back, right? Yeah, this is the back. That's the front. Oh, it is. Okay. There we go. All right. Grade eight bolts are better. Yeah. Grade eight bolts are what you want. Right there. Uh, no, we got it. We do have it backwards. <laughs> Right, because this taper part, that would have spin around. Okay, so uh, the aluminum Jean roof. Carl says she loves the aluminum roof on her JL. Yeah, it's it's the way to go. So Julie, not did you only see the video of you, you were in our video. Yeah. Earlier. Okay, so what I was going to show everybody is just like the tabs that I had over on this side. Do I still have one over here? Uh, Tom, tell them how no. they can order a shirt like that oh, of yeah. their own. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so you're going to use a series of tabs and clip nuts just like this. Me, now, this is incredibly clever, okay? And let me tell you why. Because when you go to put this on by yourself, the tab and the nut are already on the cage. So all you do is put the top on and you slip the bolts in all the way around. And if you've never seen a clip nut like this, they work really good. So once this roof is attached, this has added a tremendous amount of strength because it's gonna keep rocks or roots or you know whatever from coming through to get you as you roll over. Um, it also helps to tie the whole structure together so it adds a lot of strength and it's great sun protection. It's, um, it's really, really nice. Also, on all of our cages, we have this piece that goes on the front. So this guy is what we call the filler piece. So when you put your windshield up, it ties the top of the windshield into the aluminum roof. So you don't have this big gap here to let water and dirt fall leaves like whatever fall through here onto your dash so that's wow, this cool. is really really cool and we do that on all of our cages so that's uh that's super nice all right so um i'm hoping that everybody can see you know all of the gussets and extra things that we put into these cages um, that are super important to make sure that they're safe for you and your family and friends. And uh, this, these are designed in a way that also, even if you don't tie them into the frame, if you were to roll over, it will keep you and the other occupants safe inside this cage. Okay, that's, that's the way it is on all of our Jeep cages. Would a uh, follow-up question, would the 513 gears be too high? Too much, yeah. Unless you're trying to go to 37s at some point. And Tom said geckocustom.com to order the shirt. Is a shirt. <laughs> and he can help with logos. So I know. I'm trying not help. to mess it up while we're walking around here. Aqua um, Jeep Girl didn't see our video. Oh, uh, well, she, she can, can re replay this, it as soon yeah, as we're over. Yeah, watch this episode. Yeah. So. Um, Aluminum tops are so awesome. Everyone loves them. Okay, more questions on are the Are the cages? windshield brackets removable? Is it possible to show that? Windshield brackets? These little guys? Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Yeah. They just come right out. Hold on, they want to see. Yeah. And so these just thread have, into the tube. Do you have the other mounting bracket for the cargo rack that you were talking about? Uh, not here. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's, uh, so this is what it looks like. It's just like this. Um, there's a bung like this that you, drill the hole and you run this in and you rosette weld it from the backside and then you weld it around the outside and then you get this so you can put these in up here okay but this is what the bracket looks like so that little guy just bolts on from the backside and you can see it over there 
can you still put any soft top on after installing the cage? So I run um, the best top super top, which is um, got a frame of its own. It's, it's a really nice high quality top. Um, I know that uh, Andrew runs the best top frameless top on his over his Genrat cage. Now that's an LJ. So, and he leaves his aluminum roof on and everything. So he's able to get that whole thing oh, on wow. there. So that's pretty cool. Are you going to be at four by four night next week? Uh, I don't know, am I? Mm, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Jerome asked, do both aluminum cargo racks have the same mounting holes? They do. Well, they're, so um, they're similar. They, they take a different bracket, but um, they're similar in the way that they, uh... oh, nope, sorry. I take that back, look. Right here, they're they're exactly the same. Here and here. Right. So, I guess my engineer is doing a good job. Can I weld this cage together with a one fifteen volt welder? Yes, yes, I've I've seen guys do it. Yep. It's you only need something beefier if you're going to be welding on like toe points or something like that. And remember. Um, well, actually we haven't talked about this. So when, when we, after we tacked this cage together, what we did was we went around and welded halfway on all the tubes on the outside. Okay. We let that fully cool and then we came in and welded halfway on the inside all the way around. Um, that way you're letting the cage kind of expand and contract together. So when you pull it out, it doesn't go boing, you know, so. Kane says, love these videos. I have your fenders and bumpers definitely going into the cage next. Nice. Yeah. Cage needs to be on everybody's short list for sure. And James said, can't wait to put one in my TJ. And honestly, everybody, you know, if you do the bulk of the work, if you get the interior out, so it took us two hours to gut this thing, right? All the interior, the factory cage, everything out, two hours. Then it took us, what, three hours to put in all the brackets and... You know, getting all the, the, what we call the prep work done um, is, is important. Then we spent, what, another two or three tacking it in? Yeah, just about. It didn't take long. Um, but it is a two-person job, right, to kind of hold everything up and get the ratchet straps on. Um, I know people have done it by themselves, but, man, it's, it's dangerous. These tubes are heavy, and if they hit you, it's going to hurt. Steve Bird said he did it with ratchet straps by himself. There he goes. <laughs> Yep. So, um, but boy, I'll tell you, you know, you just like Aqua Jeep girl was talking about now you get inside this and you've got a ton of confidence. I don't know if you guys saw when I came back from the Rubicon, the entire time I was driving this thing, I was thinking, man, Tony, you have no safety in this thing. Do not flop this over. Do not roll it. Um, so that's why I came back and the first thing I put in was a cage and to celebrate that, we put them on sale so you guys can get a cage for yourself and, and get safer, for sure. And I know a lot of people, now that it's kind of the end of the season, a lot of people are looking for those winter projects and stuff. So it's a great time to talk about this. Jerome, said, I was able to lift a JKU cage out of my Jeep with the engine hoist in my shop. Took a bit of finesse, but can be done that way. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so um, super easy. If you get one person on each corner, man, these things come right out. Even the one for the four-door. Um, I think the four-door cage, when I weighed mine, it was 299 pounds. Wow. So um, they're, they're not that heavy. And, um, yeah, something like this will come out, you know, pretty easily. So. Okay, we're all caught up. All right. Well, we did pretty good. We got about five minutes left, so I got a few minutes for questions. While I'm waiting for the last few questions to come in, I'm going to remind everybody that we have a sign-up right now on our website for our Genrite Turkey Run out at the Hammers. Um, that is, what, the 18th through the 26th. So it's the weekend before, all the way through the weekend of Thanksgiving. You can come for part of it, all of it, the beginning, the end, the middle, doesn't matter. Just come out and have fun with us. Um, we do a couple trails a day. We do trails of all different levels. So we welcome you know everybody from you know stock all the way up to fully built. And then our Christmas crawl, the, the uh, sign up for that, that's limited, by the way, 
to a couple hundred vehicles. So if you're interested, you need, definitely need to sign up for that like right away and tell your friends. Um, that is here in Simi Valley. So if you live far away and want to sign up, you're welcome to, but you got a heck of a drive. So we do have people come all the way from San Diego and, and those areas. So it is a very popular run. And I wouldn't be surprised if that sells out quickly. So, but the Turkey Run Unlimited, come join us, camp with us. Um, super fun. And uh, you, I, I trust, trust me, when you are done, you will go home saying, I have wheeled enough. <laughs> so nobody leaves there going, man, I wish I wheeled a little more. No, you will be done. So more questions? Tom Nagley from Texas says, I came to High Desert Roundup in California. That's right. With my cage still in That's the box. Right. Yep. And the entire time I thought, please don't let me roll until I get the cage installed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Does and I know, oh, go ahead. Oh, does Tony have a preferred brand of fuel injection conversion for a 4.2 and a YJ? Yeah, I actually prefer the factory Mopar fuel injection. But if, that, if you can't find it or that's too expensive, this Jeep has the Howell, H-O-W-E-L-L -L, fuel injection, which works fine. Oh, there's the brackets. Oh, they wanted to see that. Okay. We, we found some more brackets. Yeah, these are the ones that go to the cage. Ah, for the cargo rack? Uh, it's, I thought it was over there. Those turkeys are fast. Um, by the way, we, the, the turkey or Thanksgiving dinner at our turkey run is a potluck. I cook all the meat. I cook like eight turkeys and a couple of hams. I mean, we, we go big on this. And I think last year we fed 160 people, so. It's a very popular thing for those of you that can be away on a trip like that. All right, here's the cool bracket. So um, these little guys um, give you the ability to bolt on to the inside here of the cage and then support the cargo rack. So uh, if, you, if you end up running our cage, so. Very cool. Yeah, pretty cool. Aqua Jeep Girl said, you guys are the best. Great show. Cages are a total game changer. I am loving mine. Nice. Nice. Yeah, you know, um, the worst thing is um, when I see somebody out there and what could have been, you know, just a simple mishap turns into a disaster. And um, there's really no need for that. Let me, let me remind you of this. Like I told you, you know, there were four life lights out every day at trail hero i got news for you one helicopter ride like that is about four thousand dollars um you just paid to have somebody else install your cage okay so um yeah that that starts making this look cheap so <laughs> that's if we don't get injured that's if yeah and in addition to that you know if you miss work and you got surgeries or whatever else like you know i don't even like to think about that stuff so um i just say Get, get the safety you need from the get-go. And uh, really, honestly, a cage is something that every new Jeeper should have. They have no idea how close to death they are on just about everything. So um, <laughs> I'm a big fan of getting a cage early on. Unfortunately, a cage is almost always the last thing somebody does. So DJ said, I'm wanting to build a JKU. Just picked one up for $3,000 with a blown 3.6 dedicated trail rig buggy-ish. Nice. Who's the best person to talk with at Genrite to create a game plan? Uh, Andrew Harris, and he will be in tomorrow morning. You can call him right away. And Jeep Pope asked, when the YJ build is done, will it be a Genrite giveaway? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. So th this, I'm not sure how far I'm going to morph this. Um, right now, it's a, a great little trail rig, and uh, actually one of my guys here would like to buy it. So I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I've already bought a TJ that I plan to do the TJ to LJ uh, kit to and show everybody online. Now, like I said, we've actually filmed this entire thing step by step as we've gone. So um, we'll be placing that video on YouTube so you guys will all be able to go back over and see every step of this through the whole thing. So it's going to be pretty cool because I, I want people to know you can do it with minimal tools you can do this and uh be a lot safer 
so. <laughs> your mom said, Jen Wright and Cage is as safe as your mother's arms. <laughs> <laughs> Good By one, the mom. way, my mom's been in these Jeeps with us plenty of times. And uh, she was out at, speaking of Trail Hero, she rode on the Ledges Trail where everything's like off camber and Whoa, you feel like Nana. you're about to roll. And uh, she had all the confidence that she was in her Gen Wright cage. So pretty Laura cool. Laura Coda says, I want to buy the TJ to LJ conversion when you get it done. There you go. See? So she's got a Gen Wright cage and the aluminum roof. She's got all the good stuff. So, um, Jer Jeremy asks, is there a way to locate the mounting brackets for the aluminum roof without the roof for a future install? No. No, you, you really want to use the roof as the because when, once you pull it off you know it'll go back on exactly so it's it's really the easiest way so Devin had already preloaded all the tabs and you literally just slide into place you tack them all you pull it you weld them and man that sucker will go right back on there Steve. but a big a big part of it is um what we do is clamp it down so there's no space between so um because you want the roof to fit nice and tight did you see that? Yeah. How right now it sits up, but you can actually force it down and get it really tight to the roof. So, and it won't rattle. It'll be, it'll be nice. So. <laughs> Adam Hartley said the factory YJ roll bar folds in a roll. I know from experience. Yeah. The Genrite design is super nice. Yeah. We showed you guys. It's, it's still over here. You know, we showed you how um, cheesy this thing is. I mean, it's, it's a glorified Toys R Us swing set. So, um, I certainly don't want to trust your life to that. And we showed everybody how these bars, which are even thinner, are just slid on and bolted here. You know, that this is what's over your head. <laughs> so that's, that's all. There's, the, you know, it bolts to a sheet metal windshield frame. I mean, there's, there's nothing to that thing. So, yeah. <laughs> Eric Brady said it's the only cage I trust with my daughters in the Jeep. There you go. There you go. So, um, why cage sounds thicker than a JKU cage? No, no, no. So, a uh, JKU cage is the exact same wall thickness, but a JKU is two inch diameter instead of inch and three quarter. So, the, the cage diameter is dictated on the weight of the vehicle. So, typical little Jeep like this is about 3,500 pounds. Okay, well, a JK is like 6,500 pounds. Okay, so by going to two inch tubing. It's the difference in the diameter times the square root. So two inch tubing is twice as strong as inch and three quarter. Oh, he meant so, the factory JK. Oh, yeah, YJK. yeah, yeah, definitely. Sorry, yeah, for sure. Remember, all these factory cages, you know, they put a big old pad on there so that it looks super beefy, but underneath, it's not. No, it's, it's thin wall. So... Um. Let's see. Steve Waterman said, I love my TJ to LJ. I get so many compliments. And it works good. That, that, that 115 wheelbase with the, the short departure, short approach. I mean, that's, we were watching Ari in, in the Jeep he just got, and he's going up and down everything he wants to. So. Oh, Mary Burns says hi. Hey, Mary. Hi, Mary. <laughs> it's pretty late back there. And Mark Lawrence said he's going back to the LJ. Loves it. Yeah. So. That's All it. right, everybody. Like caught up. Um, we've, we've used up our hour with you. We appreciate you watching. Uh, next Wednesday, we'll do a full recap of Trail Hero with videos and pictures and everything. I'll have uh, all the guys in here so you can hear the dialogue from all of us. And uh, until then, stay safe and order up your cage.